Today is Danny Diaz. Danny, how you doing? I'm doing great, David. Uh, it's really nice to uh, to talk to you. Uh, it's, been, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since uh, since you were on my show, at, at least 10 years. And yes. uh, I think the last time I saw you was right when I joined Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You saw me and introduced you. yourself, and I'm like, ah, I remember you from years ago. <laughs> I remember seeing you in um, at a tech ready. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that was, gosh, six or seven years ago. Yes, and, uh, yes, uh, and it's, it's weird time. that you, you and I look the same. I know. I have a, have a lot less hair these days. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. And what are you doing these days? I understand you're doing a lot of IoT. Yeah, so for the last uh, five years or so, uh, I've been part of the Global Black Belt team at Microsoft, uh, focus, uh, focusing on IoT. And, and, and prior to that, I uh, when I was working at the MTC, exactly, right? Uh, when I was working at the MTC, I... Um, uh, I, I also focus on IoT, so so I've been doing IoT now for for quite some time. Hmm. Well, if a lot of people don't know what that is, what's IoT? Yeah, so so IoT you know is defined as the Internet of Things. Um, and and back I don't know maybe seven eight years ago when it started getting popular, uh, it was it was mainly around uh, uh, tiny devices and people playing with Arduinos and and making little gadgets and and, and such. Um, but over the last uh, five years or so, maybe, maybe four years, uh, it has really taken off in the enterprise, uh, where you see more and more companies uh, adopting um, IoT. I, I call it the gateway to digital transformation uh, mm. because it really is um, a, a, a set of technologies that that enables you to embrace uh, digital transformation uh, uh, within your company. And then uh, over the last couple of years, we've seen... Uh, a lot of interest from manufacturing customers uh, because they've been doing IoT for quite some time, right? So we just called it differently. Uh, back in the day, manufacturing companies will have uh, uh, POCs that will connect to a historian, for instance. They, they will collect all this data. You can argue that, that that's IoT, right? Hmm, okay. uh, the, uh, the issue with a lot of these companies was that it was too expensive for them to do anything with the data. So that's now, a lot of data, too. Exactly. Yeah. So now in the world of the cloud, uh, it's, 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 it's easier for you to take that data, consume it uh, and make sense of that data. And that's and that's why uh, they're embracing it. So is that driving a lot of the popularity of IoT these days is to, uh, the fact that we can now store more data, analyze more data. Or just, we just have massive capacity with the cloud. Exactly. Uh, within uh, especially with, with the manufacturing, you know, uh, uh, Four years ago, uh, maybe a handful of companies uh, were interested in in, uh, in IoT from the manufacturing side. Uh, now it seems like every manufacturing company that, that we talk to uh, is either starting to engage in an IoT initiative or already well down the road within their um, IoT projects. Hmm. Um, what's uh, well, tell me about some of the uh, the recent advances in IoT that uh, particularly around the Microsoft space. Yeah, so you know, for, I think it was two, two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago, Microsoft announced a big uh, investment in IoT. It was a, it was a, a five billion dollar investment over, over five years. Um, so, so the last couple of years, we've seen tons of uh, innovation uh, in the industry, but especially at Microsoft. Uh, so, uh, some of the most recent ones that that that, that just went um, GA, for instance, is Azure, Azure Digital Twins. Uh, which allows you to now uh, basically model uh, your physical space uh, and, and digitize it. So you could uh, completely uh, digitize a factory floor, for instance, uh, and be able to see and virtualize uh, the production yields uh, for every machine. You can you can start visualizing if there's any any slows uh, slow down in, in in production, if there's any issues, uh, and and allows uh, the operation um, uh, facilities to or, or management. Uh, to be able to to take a look at the facilities in a holistic way, uh, so hmm. uh, ADT can work uh, smart buildings, smart you know hospital, hotels, uh, factories. Uh, te technically, you can do it on, uh, on an airplane, on a on a truck. Uh, anything allows you to that that allows you to that that is physical and, and 
ADT allows you to model it uh, into the digital world. So that's uh, that's been extremely popular. Another one that uh, you and I were chatting uh, earlier is, uh, which I'm pretty excited about myself, is um, is Azure Percepts. Um, oh yeah, I had not which, heard about it before you told me. Yeah, and Azure Percepts is a pretty pretty interesting uh, uh, concept and, and project. So the idea is that if if, if you if you think about it, uh, most of the IoT project I think is. Um, about seventy percent of IoT deployments uh, will, in, will include some sort of um, autonomous uh, or uh, decision making at the edge by you know in the next couple of years. So that's seventy percent of IoT um, projects will include AI. Define that term at the edge. What, what at the edge, sure, yeah. Th- th- thank you. So so if, if you if you consider cloud computing, right? So you have. Uh, you have tons of power uh, in compute. You have the ability to store uh, basically unlimited uh, amounts of data at a, at a pretty low cost. Um, but sometimes you need to make decisions uh, where you cannot afford the round trip of the device sending information to the cloud, the cloud analyzing that information and then bringing, ba- bringing it back to the device to make a decision uh, or to take an action rather. Uh, so edge computing uh, becomes a, a pretty natural fit uh, for IoT, where uh, you are consuming and collecting tons of data. You need to make decisions, uh, but your decision uh, is, is is really time sensitive. So th- think of a um, of a, uh, a drilling machine, like a high expensive uh, a drilling machine uh, uh, that, that you're monitoring. If you need to stop that bid based on some measurements that you know some telemetry that that, that you have coming up. It may be too late for you to send it to the cloud, analyze the pattern uh, of that bit, uh, and then bring back and say to the to the to the bit to stop, right? To stop stop the drill. That might be too late. Uh, with um, with uh, edge computing, you can process in that lo- you can process that locally at the edge and be able to turn that decision around a lot faster. Uh, in some cases, uh, you just don't have uh, the bandwidth. Uh, think of a, a video analytics, right? So if you're processing video for for people counting or for um, license plate dete- uh, detection uh, or whatever it might be, you're not going to send all that video to the cloud, right? It's just not cost effective to do so. Uh, so uh, being able to do uh, to do that in the edge uh, or at the edge uh, just makes sense in IoT, and uh, it's, it's it's one of the big abas- advancements that that we've seen over the last couple of years in IoT. Uh, nice. So you get to use the power of the cloud for maybe building models but uh, reduce that latency by taking those models and pushing them down actually to the devices that are going to be utilizing that. Exactly. And, and the beauty, uh, so, so IoT, our, our Edge product is called uh, IoT Edge. Uh, it's, it's the gateway, the software uh, that, that, that we make available. Obviously, we have some hardware services that uh, can act as, as a field gateway, um, so the, the, the actual hardware. But IoT Edge, the software, uh, what is awesome about that? Number one is based on, on Docker, right? So if you can containerize your application, you can run it uh, on on IoT Edge, and um, what it allows you to do is to fully manage uh, that deployment through the cloud. Uh, so what I can do is, in the case of uh, AI, uh, video analytics, uh, for instance, I can go in, I can uh, uh, once I provision my my device, which I can do uh, I can do it uh, 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 zero touch using device provisioning service, which is another Azure uh, service. Once I have that device provision, I can then go in from the cloud. I can create a manifest that says I want these modules to be uh, uh, to be deployed uh, to this box or to a subset of boxes, right? So if you have uh, dozens of devices out there in the field, you can say. Uh, go ahead and deploy this uh, this set of modules uh, to this set of devices, or you can send it to the to, to the entire fleet. And um, so, yeah, so you can you can do all, all of the management of that via, via the cloud. Uh, so one of the things that one of the guys on my team, uh, Jay, uh, was working on um, is, you know, can I automate even the uh, the ML ops here, right? So can I uh, deploy a model using um, uh, using IoT Edge? Then uh, collecting data, can I retain, uh, retrain the model uh, uh, hands off, right? So can, I can trigger uh, the model to be retrained, rescore it, and then once I have a new model, I can uh, seamlessly send it back to the edge every month or so, right? So it's like you know that uh, that continuous life cycle of machine learning where I am training it, uh, deploying it, 
training it, deploying it, training and deploying it, and doing that automatically, uh, it's um, it's fully enabled by by our technologies these days. What does Azure Percepts fit into this? Yeah, so Azure Percepts. So, so if you think about uh, uh, machine learning uh, or, or video analytics, uh, it could be speech recognition. Uh, that stuff is not it's not trivial. Uh, one of the things that I love about IoT uh, is that you really get to touch uh, so many different components of coding edge technology these days, right? So so obviously you need to have a good understanding of cloud because an IoT solution is by default a cloud solution these days. Um, but then you also need to be aware of the device side of, of the house. You know what devices you're going to use, what kind of uh, what kind of po power constraints you have, or connectivity constraints. Uh, and when you start talking about uh, machine learning at the edge, one of the things that you have to really take into consideration is: Can I actually process this this model with the hardware that I have? Right. So you start have to start picking the right cameras. Uh, the the right uh, actual uh, gateway. You know, are, are you using a GPU? Or are you going to use uh, use you're going to use CPUs? So mm -hmm. Azure Percepts uh, uh, does a, a couple things. Uh, one of them is it, it kind of removes that complexity. So we have a set of reference design for hardware. Uh, if you go in, uh, for for instance, you can buy our our Azure Percepts development kit. Uh, which comes with a hardware uh, rubberized, so 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 it's, it comes in a hard hard metal casing. Uh, it comes with a, a pretty nice camera, uh, and then mm -hmm. you also have the option of buying a micro, micro uh, microphone array. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now that we use, uh, I, I believe this particular uh, dev kit that we're selling, uh, the making available is developed by ASUS. Uh, mm -hmm. But we basically came up with a reference design, uh, and then we use our partners to build the hardware. And uh, the uh, you know the goal is or the vision is that in the coming months, uh, years, uh, we will have a, a a new set of devices being produced by our partner uh, hardware partners. Uh, so so it's the the hardware reference design. Uh, there is also a um, a development experience. So so think of it as a, as a uh, no code or low code. Uh, type of environment uh, for you to develop a uh, uh, model. So you could either use uh, models that we already have available. Uh, so okay. think about object detection, uh, uh, people counting, uh, audio processing, so that you can do in a, in a hotel room, for instance, you can do uh, hands-free uh, uh, commands. So you can, uh, a patient can say nurse, uh, and oh. then the, uh, the the microphone array will pick that up and we'll have a nurse come up. Uh, that that sort of stuff, and and the beauty is that we we really do make it simple uh, through Percept. So if, if you use uh, Percept Studio, which is part of the Azure portal, um, there you can deploy different models that, that are already pre-made. More will come um, uh, as 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 the product keeps uh, keeps developing, or you can create your own, and uh, you can create your own models using uh, TensorFlow, for instance, or using uh, was it Onyx, I believe. Uh, <laughs> So we make it both for the you know person like me who's not a data scientist uh, who understands enough to to be dangerous, uh, but uh, who's not going to go into the model and modify the model and uh, but we also make it available to that data scientist who 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 is able to modify the models and create models. Uh, so we we are providing a a platform for both uh, for both uh, um, uh, personas. So uh, percept does that. Uh, include both the service and the hardware, and are both required. Yeah, so so the um, the software is running uh, IoT Edge, right? So the actual uh, brains of the uh, of Percepts, the actual computing uh, unit, is running is running IoT Edge. Uh, so uh, and obviously they have their own juice there to make sure it's secure and and, 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 okay. and all that good stuff. Um, but the, the 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 core components are all uh, based on um, IoT Edge. So the way that you would deploy a new a new module is using your typical IoT Edge, you know, deployment uh, methodologies. Uh, same way, the way that you would deploy a model, um, you would use the, the same way that you would deploy a model in any other uh, IoT Edge environment. Hmm. Okay, and then also it connects somewhere to some backend Azure service. Which uh, I just actually tried to do this. I said create a resource, and I searched for Percept, and I didn't see it. Is it something I have to sign up for to get it in advance, or is it am I calling it by the wrong name? Yeah, so it's not available uh, uh, natively on the on, on the portal. Uh, but if you go to the docs, 
um, uh, which I can uh, I can send to you. Uh, you will yeah, be able to. I'll put it in the notes, and I have it. Uh, I have a link to. It. I'll put a link to it here. I'm looking at. It. Yeah, for sure. No, I was actually trying to do that even myself um, the other day when I was playing with it, uh, and I ended up just going into the um, to the um, uh, you know to the docs and then and then grab oh, the link a, from there. There's a get started. Uh, yeah, link so this is down it. in here, and then buy now for the kit and uh, and so on. Okay. Yeah, so I just I just put the um, this is the no code uh, tutorial uh, for for Vision. Um, so, so what you can end up doing, for instance, I'm, I'm going to go ahead uh, here uh, and, and just share my, my my screen for for just a second. Sounds great. So that you can see the uh, the experience, which is which is pretty cool. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and do this. And I am going to send. There you go. Let me know where you can see that. I see your camera. Yeah, so so what this is? It's recognizing is, a cup. Oh, actually, it thinks your microphone's a cup. That's that's not too bad. It looks cupish. <laughs> well, it kind of, you know, to be fair, kind of it. it it's cupish. Like a cup. <laughs> but uh, so so this is uh, the stream coming from not my main camera. This is the stream coming from the Percepts Development Kit uh, camera, which is sitting right here. Oh, very to cool. My, to my right, um, and um, so here, this is uh, Percept Studio. And uh, let's see. Well, there you go. And I can uh, run some of the sample applications. I can run uh, custom models if I want to. What, one of the things that I love about this is this here. Um, so if I go into the uh, demos and I say try one of the models. Now, uh, what, what you're seeing there um, is that there is a module in my uh, in the in the development kit. Uh, that basically takes the uh, real-time video stream feed uh, and ex exposes it via a web page. So in this case, I do have to be on the same network uh, as my as my camera, but I could, in theory, then provide that um, that video stream to say something like Azure Media Services, and then I can broadcast it if I want to uh, to the public. Um, but if if you notice, going back to the video here. Uh, it's detecting, um, I forget which, which model I have here. I think I just have object det det detection on it. But if I, if I want to change, um, I can go ahead and just change the, uh, the, the model that it's using. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select my, uh, my device. And here, for instance, I can say, well, I want to detect products on the shelf. Mm, okay. And I do the deployment of that and then go back to my model or to my uh, page and and a couple, see a slowly model, it's, 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 it's in it's there. It's pushing so, it, the model down to your device. Yeah, and the way that the model is pushed, I actually was looking at, into this yesterday. Uh, it's just a SIP file that, that we, that we uh, there, there's a, uh, every module has what we call a, a module twin, right? So it's a configuration for that module. Uh, so what we do is the, the video processing module is the same, but then the model that it's using to detect is, is different, right? It's, it's based on what you, what you give it. Because I can train it, uh, for instance, I have here, let's say I, uh, I have a collection of hats <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, but let's say I want to, um, I wanted to create a model to detect different hat, hats and maybe different makers and, and that kind of stuff. I can then train it uh, with different data. So in this case, this is a product of the shelf. So it's being a little bit more um, heavy in, in what it's trying to detect. Yeah, it's right? detecting it's just, a lot more objects this way. Even even things that it doesn't identify, it just says this is potentially a product. Whereas before, it wouldn't identify unless it was kind of sure it was a person or something cuppish or. I think and you have to re you have to remember that uh, with these things, uh, the angle of the camera, the you know the zoom of the camera, it all matters. So so in this case, I just have it set on my, on my desk here. If I was doing a true prototype, then I would take the time to maybe put it on a stand and. And play around with the angles to see yep. uh, which one gives me the best the best uh, view of my uh, of my objects. Uh, that's very cool, and that's uh, that's you didn't have to do anything in advance. Those models were already there for you. Those models were already there. I could, um, if I was that type of, if I had that type of skills, which which I <laughs> which I don't. Um, although I I would love to to learn a little bit more about these models and see if I can tweak them. I know how to train them uh, because training it is just a, a, 
a matter of providing an image uh, with a tag or a set of right. tags. Uh, in fact, uh, a long, long time ago, we did a, a POC for a customer uh, that sold, uh, um, it was a bending uh, 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 customer where every single time a product got sold, we will take a picture of it uh, to know that the product actually got sold. And we were able to detect that uh, by taking hundreds of pictures of different of their uh, inventory and then tagging it with, you know, this is a, a potato chip or this is a, uh, a piece of cake or this is, you know, a sneakers bar or whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but actually creating the model itself, creating the, uh, you know, writing the, the, the Python, the R code or whatever you're using. Uh, it's, you know, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's trivial. You, you have to have a oh, basic yeah, understanding. Oh, yeah, learning code is almost never trivial. There are, there are visual tools for doing that, but they're never quite as good as writing Python and R code. And using yeah. tools like TensorFlow. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the the last thing here I'll say about Percepts is that yeah, I can also I also have a voice. Uh, so right now there's there's two uh, sensory uh, modules uh, that that we make available. One of them is what we call the Azure Eye, and the other one's the Azure Ear. Uh, so the microphone mm -hmm. and, and the and the in the camera. Yep. So so the same way that I have um, a, a, a vision um, projects, I can also have a voice a voice projects mm -hmm. so that I can detect things like. Um, uh, imagine being in a, in a hospital uh, uh, and saying things like nurse or turn TV on, turn TV off, blinds on, blinds off, that kind of stuff uh, in hospitality or even in, 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 in a hospital uh, setting. So that just uh, det determines the vocabulary. Like if you said hospital, then words like nurse and surgery would be more easily exactly. recognized. Whereas hospitality, exactly. the word check-in exactly. and uh, room service would be more uh, more likely to be detected. Is that is that the idea? Exactly. So let me see if I can. I, I think I've had one running already. Let me see. Uh, let go to see. Santa Cruz. That was the code name, right? That was the code name. Yeah. Code for, names are for always Percepts. better at Microsoft than the actual product name. <laughs> uh, for, for for sure, for sure. Although although um you know and you you are old school Microsoft guy as well. <laughs> uh, I think we've gotten better with our name, right? It's no longer. This would have been something like. Uh, you know, Microsoft, Azure, Vision, uh, <laughs> AI Kid, you know, SP1. Those were bad names. <laughs> but still, uh, we went from uh, Indigo became, I think, uh, WPF. Now, which one yeah, of those so is better? Indigo. Avalon. <laughs> uh, it was WPF, I believe. Oslo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think what we do with Azure, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, we pick uh, names from, from cities. Right. And mountains. Oh, I'm sorry. Mountains was the, uh, oh, I forgot now, but you're right. Uh, <laughs> Windows was cities. Windows was Chicago. Windows was, yeah. <laughs> Whistler. No, what was Whistler? Anyway. Whistler's a mountain. That's, uh, was that uh, databases? I forget now. I, I forget <laughs> what it was. Yeah, that, that's, um, but anyway, so here I can go in and, and, and launch my, um, launch a, uh, a vision one. Now, um, this uh, this demo I was playing with, uh, around with it yesterday, and I can get it to wake up. Um, I have the device here. If I if, if I were to put the camera, you know, my device here has three LEDs and they're solid blue, meaning that it's ready to listen. And if okay. I use the, the the keyword, which is in this case is assistant, um, I can I can see. And, and then and then it, it if I do here get started. These are the uh, these are the keyword that I, I understands. You know. Uh, so this is an inventory demo. So I can say four boxes, you know, remove yellow box, ship mm. two small boxes, that, that kind of stuff. Um, I can train it with new commands uh, mm. too, uh, or I can even change the uh, the keyword or train the keyword. So here, for instance, if I go in and change the um, the command set to something else, I'm gonna say let's do hotel. Um, now I have a, um, a different set of keywords that I can't, uh, that I can't, uh, that I can use, right? So it's a uh, TV on, on TV oh, off. So it recognizes these, these uh, phrases right out, of, right out of the box. And if someone speaks the words lights off, it'll immediately recognize that. Yeah. And I, I can just say something like um, assistant uh, TV on. And I can see my, uh, the, for some reason I can get the, uh, this is a demo. Uh, I can't see the, uh, the response, but I definitely see my microphone uh, waking up when right. I say, you know, assistant TV on, I can see the, the LEDs changing colors. 
Um, but uh, got to see why this uh, this is not uh, not showing that feedback. But uh, but the, the, here's the power, right? So imagine uh, the scenarios that this can enable. Um, and and now you don't require an expert in in, in voice processing uh, to do any of this. Now behind the scenes, this is powered by our you know award winning speech uh, engine, right? So Lewis and, and all the other uh, speech uh, uh, services as part of connect, uh, connected services that, that we have. So so what I love about Percepts is this is just a there's no reinvention of the wheel, right? They're they're yeah. using IoT Edge. Uh, to power the experience, they're using our cognitive services. They're using uh, the technology that was already built, and so we can concentrate on adding adding value to the customer. Um, so, uh, I like pre- that. Pre- I like the simplicity of it. That's always that was always my appeal of cognitive services is the the simplicity of implementing and building solutions and um, and deploying those solutions. And this seems to have that um, similar mindset of keeping it simple uh, we're just about at time what's uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should uh no um uh iot in general is uh it's pretty exciting uh, yeah. uh it's, it's a it's a great field to if you if you want to uh you know learn all the new things uh in cloud computing and data and this gives you a great gateway to for you an excuse i guess for you to uh to go and start thinking and and adding value to to your business um uh, and, and you know the the last thing I would say is that we're here to help. Uh, Microsoft has a team of uh, uh, pre sales engineers, you know, ready to to help you uh, envision and uh, bring your uh, bring your services to to fruition. I saw the hic- uh, I saw the hiccup too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, what's uh, if somebody wanted to reach out to your team? How would they do so? Oh wow! So we don't we don't have a um, we don't have a I guess a social media experience um, in our in our team because we we typically work with enterprise customers. Um, okay. But I would say you know talk to your if if your company has a, a Microsoft enterprise team uh, engaged you know sales team uh, talk to them. Uh, our team is pre sales so so there's no there's no charge if um, uh, for us to, to get engaged. Uh, you can reach me. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. I get a whole bunch of people uh, find me there. Uh, and um, yeah, that's probably the best way to do so. Danny, thank you so much, and you stay safe. You do as well, Dave. Take care. Nice seeing you. And, and, and yesterday, I was uh, for some reason uh, one of my uh, old uh, friends uh, came, came to my mind. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft community legend uh, Josh Holmes, right? Uh, for some reason, he, he just came to my mind. Uh, it might have been because I was thinking about technology and friends, and I, I ended up thinking, "Man, it's been too long. I don't get to get on, I don't get to see him uh, anymore." Or, uh, to be quite honest, I don't get to see so many of the friends that that I developed over the years that that came into my life because of technology, right? So, if you think about the co camps, the conferences, you know, part of what makes those events so great, it's not just the content that you learn. You know, that that that's that's definitely good, but it's, it's those friendships that you develop with people uh, that, that really do last in you know, a lifetime. So, uh, 